every time something like this happens, there might be some knock-on inflation which you can't control. So mm. how do you intend to control that, especially now people are still dealing with the pandemic, um, post-pandemic price increases? Mm. Mm. Of course, you know, um, every time we, we run a policy, uh, we run a modelling and the modelling always look at uh, the impact on inflation, the impact on GDP, the impact on the sustainability of an industry, all that modelling to the credit of the civil service. So of course there's modelling and there's projection, you know, at this price or at this rate, how is this going to impact every single um, family? Um, and also how it will affect the macro numbers in terms of inflation and so on. My view is the reason why uh, subsidy retargeting was very problematic before because it was always approached from the, the requirement of the government to manage its funding and it was not seen uh, in a much bigger macro perspective. And the bigger macro perspective, whether we like it or not, we have to accept that we have a problem with wages. Yeah. We have a problem with uh, some structures in our economy. You know, we are addicted, for example, to... And I know people will hate me for saying this. Eh? We are addicted to eating out, okay. behaviorally. Uh, um, that's why our inflation. So you feel that our lifestyle does not match our incomes? No, 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 no. It's just the uh, um, because of you know the way our economy works, our society, um, and and that's of course a result of um, uh, the structure of the economy. Um, we are addicted to imported food because for many decades we don't think that it's worthwhile doing it because we had enough money to import and we are paying the price now. By doing it you mean producing food? Producing food, I mean producing raw food, you know, even things like chili and ginger we import because you know it was not worth doing and then um, you know after about 20-30 years if we tell people that you know it's worth doing and say how you know it's very difficult to convince society that is something that is worth doing. Okay, so take that is at the highest level, and then you go to the next level in terms of you know uh, um, behavioral economics. Um, by and large, our people do spend considerable amount of our net pay every month to eat out, either to take away or eating out completely. And, uh, there are many reasons for it. People feel that it's not worth cooking or people feel that they don't have the time and so on and so forth. But the reality is when we compare to other economies, for example, it is true that our households spend considerable portion of, of, of their earnings to buy um, basically cooked food. Um, and that's not the same, you know, even in Korea. Uh, in, in other countries, in other economies, uh, eating out is seen as a leisure thing, you know, you spend uh, a lot more buying raw materials, cooking it, eating in, every now and then you go out. So these are all things that um, I think the unintended consequences of, of many policies in the past. Again. So, okay, I have to stop you there. Mm. Of course, people would say that, what, you're trying to blame, mm. blame consumers for what? I don't. Yeah. It's just... You know, that's the diagnosis. You know, when you plan at our level, we compare the uh, portion of earnings spent on cooked food or takeaway food or eating out compared to other countries. It's quite obvious ours actually constitute. So therefore, our public is very sensitive to price elast elasticity and the one that is most elastic and that is most difficult to come down is actually cooked food and takeaway food. And that's why we have this dichotomy where when it comes to sub when it comes to inflation, it looks healthy. It's about two percent, two point five percent. But by and large the public feel that, you know, it just cannot be right because I feel so you know, I just I don't have enough at the month end. In order to resolve the targeted subsidy, you have to look at the macro picture. And the macro picture is not just about cost, 
it's not just about the government's requirement to fix its spending. It is also about salary. It's also about jobs. It is also, to a certain extent, it's also about the, the time that people spend travelling um, to and fro work and also how much time they have to go back and basically prepare food. You know, it's a lot more um, encompassing than just one single. And, and in the past, I think, the reason why it was difficult because when a policy is just driven by one requirement and you don't have other components, that's why you know, it doesn't work. And, and what we are hoping to do now is that, of course, you sequence different components of the policy differently, but we do have to manage all the other components as well.